This is Grow Your Business with Peter Switzer. Hello and welcome to Grow Your Business. I'm Peter Switzer and this is a program created by business owners for business owners. Grow Your Business will get inside the heads of successful entrepreneurs and business experts so you can learn from their success. We're also here to help, so if you have a pressing business question, send it to your business at skynews.com.au. It's rare to find a business delivering community benefits and turning a profit, but Access Innovation is no ordinary business. AI Media provides captioning services for the hearing impaired, and with hearing impairment affecting one in six Australians, the business social benefits are immense. A passionate advocate of social issues and an accountant by trade, Tony Abrahams is the CEO and co-founder of AI Media. Tony joins me now to share how he has cracked this niche market. Thanks for joining us, mate. Thanks, mate. Look, tell us about the business. I, I call it a captioning business, but what does it actually do? Uh, fundamentally, what we do is we provide access services uh, for people who are deaf or have a hearing impairment. Uh, you're right in saying that we're a captioning business. The very first product line that we developed was captioning that can now be seen on Foxtel and Ozstar, uh, a service that's grown from nothing to be over 160,000 hours a year now. Mm -hmm. And so how did you actually pitch the idea to this niche market? Uh, well, I guess, uh, as you said, one in six people have a hearing impairment, and for those people, uh, enjoyment of television uh, is hampered if they can't follow the soundtrack. I mean, you try and watch some of your favourite shows with the sound down, mm. it's, it's, it's not as good an experience as you might be, as you might be used to. Yeah. Uh, and so it really was a case of saying, well, could we find a cost-effective way to deliver uh, text that someone who is deaf or hearing impaired could choose to switch on? Mm. Uh, and I guess with uh, the subscription TV services being relatively new in Australia and penetration being... Uh, uh, you know, um, relatively modest uh, back in 2003, uh, there was a point where you kind of get enough people who uh, might be interested in subscribing when the benefits of providing the service uh, outweigh the cost. How did you sort of knock on the door and get the people at Fox Hill and Ostar to, to, to back your business? Uh, well, I guess, we, I mean, we didn't sort of knock on, on their door. They, they knew that this was a service that they wanted to provide and yep. there's a competitive market out there to provide the service. Mm. Uh, what we did is we focused on how we would deliver um, high quality, high volume, low cost captions. Mm. Uh, and the incumbent provider at the time was providing the services for um, the free-to-air networks, mm. and that model is very different to a subscription network, uh, to the subscription platform. Uh, and so we really tailored a service that would uh, appeal to the economics of our subscription TV did, clients. Did it require you to actually understand the kinds of buttons that needed to be pressed to portray you as a real rival to the incumbent in the market at the time? Yeah, I mean, we needed to really appreciate what the value would be in delivering captions. So at the time, there was a feeling that, uh, say, to put American-style captions up on TV, which are um, all white, all in caps, and you'd spell colour, C-O-L-O-R, mm -hmm. rather than C-O-L-O-U-R, was somehow not good enough. Mm. But when you realise that it might cost three times as much to author a caption file from scratch rather than buy, say, the captions for The Simpsons or Will and Grace from someone who's already done it in yeah. the States, mm. um, that was really the argument that we had to make. And we had to make that argument based on some pretty solid research that, that, that we uh, certainly looked at and, and, and that was the kind of model that we sold in. So the business growth, just some idea how the business has grown from starting point to where you are now. Uh, well, we, we started off just doing pre-recorded captioning mm. uh, and we did that for, for 20 channels uh, in the first year and uh, that was on about 5% of content. So now we've grown uh, and the, the service is delivering not only pre-recorded captioning but live captioning. Mm. And live captioning is something that we started to deliver in 2006. Uh, we now deliver the live captioning that you can see on uh, Sky News mm. and on Fox Sports. And uh, the uh, live captioning service uh, then made us think, hang on, we can do live captioning of television, so that can include deaf and hearing impaired people in 
watching TV, but what about those other aspects of life that deaf or hearing impaired people currently miss out on? Namely, how do you get an education if you can't hear? Mm, mm. You know, and how do you, how do you get a so, job? So, so kids in school have been neglected in a sense because they, they can't even hear the teacher. Correct. Yeah. So how do, how do you actually teach a kid who can do anything except hear uh, is a problem that's actually eluded us. So what have you done there? Has this been a, a source of innovation for your business? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, AI Live is the product that we uh, launched last year uh, following extensive tests with the New South Wales Department of Education over the last four years. Uh, and that uses a system whereby we have a re-speaker uh, a re-speaker. A re-speaker. <laughs> uh, a re-speaker is a bit like a UN interpreter, mm. uh, if you like. Yep. So as a UN interpreter would listen to something in Spanish and spit it out in French or English, uh, we have someone who is a re-speaker who listens to what the teacher is saying and they're not in the classroom, so mm. we get the audio out of the classroom. Mm. They would either be sitting... The teacher is mic'd up effectively. Yeah, the, yeah. Teacher, the teacher's mic'd up mm. and we, we get the audio out of that classroom. Mm. We have one of our re-speakers sitting either at home or in an office mm. uh, and they re-speak into trained speech recognition software mm. which uh, puts out with about 99% accuracy mm. what that person is saying. Now they have to speak somewhat robotically, yeah. uh, they have to speak in all the punctuation yeah. uh, and they have to train their dictionaries for any proper nouns or words. So the student is, 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 so the teacher speaks, it goes off to the re-speaker who then speaks into, into something that comes up in a laptop for the kids sitting in the classroom. That's right. Yeah, that's a great idea. Or, or yeah. an iPad. Or an iPad. You yeah, know? and so the kid, so a deaf kid can now just travel around with an iPad, uh, and then five seconds after the teacher says something, it appears in writing there. Uh, has this been, you know, a big take up of this, or is the enthusiasm for this innovation looking good, or are you have to? Are you shaking the windows and rallying the walls of government to, to help you? Oh, we're definitely shaking, <laughs> shaking the walls of government. No, we've, we've got incredible support, actually, for, uh, for AI Live. Uh, we've had um, hundreds of students uh, register uh, for the service. We're currently in the process of rolling out a national pilot uh, and we're in discussions with every state and territory government and the federal government mm. for a funding model that will help us roll this out. Mm. Tony, is it difficult when you're creating a wonderful product but at the same time it's the audience or the customers who'd love to have it effectively can't afford it without government support? Is that a frustration for you that every time you want, want your business to go forward you actually have to, to do the politics of it all? Uh, look, that's a great question. And uh, this, just this week on Australia Day, uh, a campaign that's uh, under the title Every Australian Counts was launched to see if we can't find a better way to deliver access and independence for people with impairment. Mm. And that is to basically give someone who has an impairment, be it a hearing impairment or a mobility difficulty, the funds that are required to just allow them to access uh, the things that you and I take for granted. So, for someone who's deaf, it would be a live, could be a live captioning service mm. uh, at schools or at university or in the workplace. Uh, but for someone who needs help getting up, it would be to fund uh, a carer to come in and, and help them get up. Uh, and workplace modifications for, for those people who need similar modifications. Now, that's a scheme that goes, has been going under the moniker of a, a national disability insurance scheme. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something that's got um, uh, support from, from uh, the government, from the coalition and from the Greens. Yeah. Uh, and so we're quite hopeful that that situation will, will change. Tony, thanks very much and good luck with it all. Thanks, mate. Coming up after break, how can you identify and break into a niche market? My next guest proved that finding your niche is business gold.